Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from Razor Emporium. A common question that I get all the time from customers out there and Razor aficionados is regarding the different war sets made by Gillette and other companies from both the First World War and the Second World War. So I wanted to talk first about the sets that were government issued during the First World War. As a lot of people may know from our history lessons, mustard gas and other particulates that were launched by air were a very high concern from soldiers in the First World War. Having a nice clean shaven face for that press fit with the rubber against your, your face from the gas mask was of very high importance to Uncle Sam. And so they worked with Gillette and gave them a government contract to buy millions of these uh, khaki sets. And these were then given out to soldiers as part of their supplied uh, goods given out in their sets. So the, the sets, if you're looking for, that are war issued, uh, they were bought by the U.S. government, are the khaki sets in a square container that say property U.S. Army at the top. They'll say that on both the mirror, the back of the case, property U.S. Army, and also on the underside of the guard on the ball end old type style razor that's featured in these sets. So look for that insignia, that stamp on all three pieces, and that is officially uh, the real deal, the, the real war issued set. Now, amongst other sets in that era, there were, there were other sets that were put out that were you know, more for uh, supporting the war effort or just period pieces. Maybe you could buy them at the, uh, the store on the different bases, or maybe you could buy them at your local you know, hardware store, retail store. But they weren't something that Uncle Sam bought and, and provided to soldiers. Those sets include variations of the khaki set, such as this one, that has your fold out and fold up snap case. This all folds together beautifully. Uh, your U.S. service set here with the purple fabric, the mirror as well. And the, on the top, there's a place with insignia for different branches of the Army. And the most grandiose and the most beautiful of all the sets was your military officer set. This featured an upgraded razor. Instead of the ball end uh, old type handle, you got the bulldog handle. Um, and of course, you know, the nice long barrel that goes into it. This is just a beautiful set all around. Uh, imitated a lot today with different razor manufacturers. I did an entire uh, episode on uh, the How to Grow a Mustache podcast on this set. So if you haven't checked that already out, uh, it's a great uh, issue there. As well, you would have the two blade banks for blade storage. And you have your canisters for your brush and your soap. And a shameless plug here for our new soap that we've uh, done with Douglas is the uh, King R Emporium soap that fits right into your canisters. So just to let you know about that. Um, but this was the most elaborate of the sets, but again, not something that was government issued. You could definitely buy it. It was called the military officer set because at a price tag of, I think, $10, it was something that definitely more of the officers, people with a higher pay cut from Uncle Sam could, uh, could afford. Features a mirror in the back. And all these sets feature original fabric that was, uh, was bought from the government. And you notice the look of it has that real typical khaki, olive drab kind of look to it. So it all feels unique, it all feels real. All this is from World War I. Another interesting piece that's not at all a, a razor, but it's razor related, is this great book that we actually have scanned in on razorarchive.com as well. It's how to recognize the rank of Uncle Sam's men afloat and ashore. And this showcases a few of the different war sets uh, as well as different uh, charts to recognize the different rank of military officers and men. So a great piece of history. Check it out on RazorArchive.com. One other piece of history that uh, is included with some of these sets I got in. Completely honored to open the set. You know, we see razor sets that are beautiful and pristine, but sometimes one that's really beat up, especially if it's a war effort, uh, you know, war issue set, gives it all that more relevance. This khaki set went to war and back. It says property U.S. Army on it, and included inside of it was a small handwritten note from uh, the soldier that owned this set, dated July 26, 1918. Talk about a wonderful piece of history, just a small detailed handwritten note talking about his early deployment and services he went through. We've done an entire episode on that uh, note there itself, but just a piece of history that's lovely to be able to talk about and hold and, and uh, relate to. So all these pieces, uh, you know, from World War I, and the last piece I'm going to talk about 
is non-Gillette. It is a, uh, a Schick repeating razor. We're all familiar with the injector style. Well, the grandfather of them all was Colonel Jacob Schick's injector you know, style. He was fascinated with the idea of the semi-automatic rifle uh, from the First World War. And you could easily put a clip inside of here by rotating your head 90 degrees. You could advance a blade along your guard and then go ahead and start shaving with it. This is the very first grandfather of them all, the, the Type A repeating razor. Along with it, I have a great uh, war package, uh, small box. It was from the First World War as well of uh, the different uh, magazines that would go up inside the handle for all your blades. So that's going to take us from the, the First World War. Now, a lot of people have these sets. They mistake them for the Second World War, but they're not. All these World War I, 1917, 1919, 1920 era. We're going to now switch gears 20 years in the future to the Second World War. And from Gillette, there was not an official government-issued set. There was, however, uh, just like these other sets you could buy at the time that were, you know, that, that period, there was a period piece that is considered the World War II period piece, and that is this. It's a Bakelite handle, uh, aluminum head, razor, in a very simple, um, very simple uh, blue and black uh, package here, and it features an anodized aluminum head. Uh, we speculate that because Gillette was using um, you know, aluminum because Uncle Sam was out there using all the brass for the armory and for shell, so aluminum was able to save on that metal. And by anodizing it, it would help to preserve it. And um, along with the razor and the head uh, and the handle, another feature from the Second World War that you can uh, look for when you're out you know, building your collection or hunting are the camouflage blades. These are actually sometimes more rare than these sets to find. The camouflage blades were no different than the Gillette Red Thin Blades of the time, but they had kind of a muted color scheme. So in case uh, a soldier was using one of these and threw the packaging on the ground, uh, perhaps it would not be as obvious in the brush and be as obvious to find and spot. So it kind of was uh, camouflage in itself. Um, these are, you know, like I said, what the correct blades you should put along with your um, Bakelite handle and aluminum uh, headset to make a World War II era piece complete. Um, later, you see after the war stopped, they still use these handles. They probably just had a lot of them left over. And they then, you know, use the official brass head, silk screen logo here. And uh, so these are a little bit later, but definitely the same period of time post-World War II. Other razor manufacturers were also on the same uh, game as Gillette. And they made these similar sets that featured Bakelite handles, plastic heads, plastic handles, and uh, convenient little carrying cases like this. So that is all World War II. Now, one final thought I want to leave you on. I think that the reason that Gillette was, like I said, was so concerned about you know, government issuing these was, was definitely uh, the gas mask issue in the, in the First World War. I think that may be a reason why they didn't feel the need to have to provide the soldiers with a shaving uh, outfit in the Second World War. That wasn't so much of a concern. But definitely, uh, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I, I see it from a standpoint of, wow, what a move from Gillette. Not only did they get a multi-million dollar government contract uh, to produce razor sets, but then they basically had all these uh, men who were able to come back, then fall in love with their razors. And that's why you see a lot of them survive. A lot of people family members out there actually have some of these sets that are in their family and the men continued to use them and buy the Gillette blades and it was just uh, complete uh, buy-in and it's really what helped push shaving into the mainstream and really overcome straight razors. Don't forget that right around the same period of time of uh, the First World War, not everyone had converted to double-edge razor shaving yet. A lot of men were still using the straight edge. So the, the World War I landmark was really a period where once they came back, that was really it. Straight razors had officially basically died out. Men everywhere were now shaving with double-edged razors. It was what they were used to in the service. It was popular, and uh, it was now convenient now that they own one. So that was kind of the death of the straight razor and really the, the launch of safety razors completely uh, becoming more prominent and going on to basically taking over the world. So Gillette fulfilled its promise of being known the world over, and now you guys know the history of the war sets from both the First and Second World War. I hope this video has helped to clear up any kind of confusion. If you've seen different sets out there and you didn't know when it was from, 
And now you've seen some of these complete sets, what they, uh, what they need to be complete, different blades, different caps, proper US arming, camouflage blades, Bakelite handles. All these are things that indicate a war period in time for razor production. I hope you found this video beneficial. Thanks so much for watching as always. And uh, please do write into us with any more requests for videos. We love to hear from you guys. We love to hear about videos that you guys want to see and not just videos we want to make. So stay tuned to our YouTube uh, channel for more videos and more uh, information of Razor history and education. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.